I'm Ted Keyes in Pasadena, California. Welcome to my Tuesday conference call, a free high-powered meeting I hold live every Tuesday for top producing freight agents. Go to tedkeysonline.com for complete call information. Then join us weekly to see new, serious, struggling, and experienced sales professionals move more freight efficiently, effectively, effortlessly, and make more money financially. So watch my recorded call topic highlighted there on your screen right now. When you're finished, go to tedkeysonline.com and hear more podcasts, read more blog posts, watch more videos, and while you're there, visit my freight sales success store for top-notch freight moving products to explode your business today. Enjoy watching and applying my Tuesday conference call. Welcome everybody again to my Tuesday conference call. Ted Keys, your host here, calling you from Pasadena, California. Again, this is a call I do every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's a call where I teach, train, show you how to move more freight, move it efficiently, effectively, effortlessly, and in the end, you make more money financially. Got a great topic for today. My title is called the, the my title topic is called one main habit to develop in a new year. One main habit to develop in a new year. As usual, for any email that I sent you today, scroll down to those attachments on the bottom, and we're going to go over these attachments one by one. As typical, I always start off with our Green Meadows Productions agent leaderboard. Go ahead and open that first attachment. Again, my my purpose is to show you that it is possible to make money in this profession. And when you get your name on this board, you do make money. But in order to make money, you've got to get your name on the board. And in order to get your name on the board, you've got to take action. Take action by, first of all, getting your name on this board and then seeing your name move up the ladder. So my main point here is as you become, when you become a Green Meadows Productions agent for us, make it a point, make it a goal to get your name on this board and climb up the ladder in as many categories as possible. Okay, let's go ahead and move on, move out of that uh, attachment, and let's go ahead and open up the next attachment, the second attachment. We're going to get into our main topic today. Now, as I said earlier, the one main habit to develop in a new year. This is a, a habit for you to think about and actually uh, not only think about, but make it a goal. Make it a goal if you don't do this already. Now, I will say this. My wife Marie and I do this already, but the one main habit that I'm going to talk about that you should develop this new year, if you haven't already, is becoming an early bird. What is an early bird? An early bird is somebody that gets up very, very early, basically gets up with the birds. Here's why I'm talking about this topic today. Now, Today there are more goals keeping us late, keeping us up late than ever before. And whether it's work, relationships, or side projects, more and more individuals are tweeting on their Twitter account at 2 a.m. instead of at 7 a.m. Now, there are hundreds of blogs that are out there and available on the Internet referencing studies that talk about getting up early is the right thing to do and how becoming an early bird leads to success. However, most individuals, on the other hand, feel that working late and sleeping in is just plain easier, and that's why they do it. It's easier. It's easier to go up late. Uh, it's easier to go, go to bed late and get up late, believe it or not. Well, have you read any of those blog posts but still struggle to get up early? Well, if that's the case, it's time to commit now to waking up early. Being an early bird is challenging, but studies show the benefits far outweigh your struggles. Here's why. I'm going to give you six points as to why 
the benefits of getting up early far outweigh your struggles of staying awake when you get up late. The first point I'm going to make is that early birds are more productive. Point number one, early birds are more productive. Did you know that there's a best time of day for your brain? Let me say that again. Did you know that there's a best time of day for your brain? Mornings are when our brains are firing on all cylinders and we reach maximum productivity. We reach it in the morning. doesn't matter when you get up. That's when our brain is firing the most in the morning. That's when we're the most productive. So when you identify your most difficult task and tackle it in the morning, you're more likely to get it done. It's that simple. If you've got a hard-to-cover load out there, your probability of getting it covered in the morning is much better than if you're getting up at 10 o'clock and attempting to cover it at 1 p.m. So go ahead, swallow the frog, just make sure it's one of the first things you do when you get up early. So that's point number one, early birds are more productive. Here's point number two. Point number two is early birds are most successful. Early birds are the most successful individuals out there. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> There's evidence that early risers are just flat out better at their jobs and professions. There's evidence that's out there that early risers are just better at their jobs and professions. Now, Laura Vanderkam, Laura Vanderkam, she's the author of What the Most Successful People Do for Breakfast, studied dozens of people and found that the ones experiencing the highest career successes were committed to an early morning get up and get at it routine. Plain and simple. So early birds are the most successful in their jobs, professions, whatever it may be, whatever, whatever people do for a living. So that's point number two, early birds are the most successful. My, my third point, point number three, is early birds have more time in the day. You think, well, gee, don't we have the same amount of time in the day? Well, early birds have more time in the day. Let me explain. By getting up early, you gift yourself more time in the day to accomplish those most important goals. Now, just explain a little further, Chris Winfield refers to these morning hours as extra time. Believe it or not, you have more hours, you have more time to work with if you get up early or when you get up early. So these are the hours you would have spent sleeping but can now use to be more productive. You just produce more value out of your 24 hours. So point number three, early birds have more time in the day. Why? Because they get up earlier. Here's point number four. Point number four is early birds, they just catch a nap when they require it. Early birds catch a short nap when they require it. Why? Because early birds have more time in their day. They can always catch a short nap in the middle of their day if and when they require it. And this is something that Marie and I attest to. Middle of the day, we've gotten most of our stuff done. What do we do? We lie down for a short, quick nap. Who knows, 20, 30 minutes. And it works out great. It gives us more energy for the rest of the day. So point number four is that early birds catch a short nap when they require it. When you get up early, you're, you can do that. It, it allows you that opportunity. Point number five, excuse me. Point number five is early birds, people that get up earlier than normal, are happier. Believe it or not, early birds are happier. Now, while there are some theories that night owls have more fun, well, a multitude of studies say that early birds are, in fact, happier overall. According to the magazine Psychology Today, one study found that early birds are generally happier because they were able to get more done in a given day than their night owl counterparts. That's just one study. 
And here's another thing to add. We've learned that being happier also results in being more productive, just flat out. If you're happier, you're going to be more productive. If you're down, you're depressed, you think that's going to put you in a mood to get going and do a lot of work? Absolutely not. So according to another study from the Social Market Foundation and the University of Warwick's Center for Competitive Advantage in the Global Economy, Happy employees were an average of 12% more productive than less happy employees. Now, that's a virtuous cycle we can all get behind. So point number five, early birds are happier. And who doesn't want to be happier? You know, if you want to just mope around all day, well, if, if that's the case, you know, being a, a freight agent for this office is not for you or for me. But if you're going to be happier, that means you're going to be more productive. You're going to be more productive by getting up earlier, going to bed earlier. Point number six. Point number six, early birds set better long-term goals. Point number six, early birds set better long-term goals. Now, Again, another study from biologist Christian Randler found that early birds are better at setting long-term goals. Now, if this equates to me, well, okay, good, because I'm an early riser. Part of my rising early is I set goals throughout the day, but I also set you know, long-term goals that I'm always thinking about and always attempting to reach. Now, uh, Christo, uh, Christoph Randler, he surveyed 367 students and discovered early risers agreed more with the phrase, I spend time identifying long-range goals for myself and I feel in charge of making things happen than late risers. So early birds set better long-term goals. I did say earlier that there are six points to uh, my, my topic here. I was wrong. There are seven points. Seven points. Point number seven is early birds are more persistent and agreeable. Early birds are more persistent and agreeable. What do I mean by this? Well, here's another study giving you a bunch of information on studies about this, this topic here. Another study from Randler, same guy, found that early risers are more persistent, cooperative, agreeable, and proactive than individuals that stay up late. These traits can also assist you to get more done when you're working because you're less likely to give up on a task and more likely to ask for assistance when you're stumped. So I've given you a lot of data, but with all this in mind, making the case for becoming an early bird is easy, right? I mean, I, I would venture to say that most of you, most of you in the listening audience, would agree with me. However, how about getting up earlier every day? Well, that's a more challenging task. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say this, but actually getting up and doing it well, as I said, that can be a little more challenging. Remember, here's my main point. One of my main points in getting up early. Remember, remember, remember that forming a habit takes an average of 66 days. Let me say that again. Remember that forming a habit takes an average of 66 days. Think about, think back when you became an agent for our office here at Green Meadows Productions. At what point uh, did you actually feel like you were, you know, you were going to be successful? I'll bet you any money you thought about it, you felt it after the second month. And that's what I typically say, around your third month, you're actually feeling the, the, the thought of, hey, I will be successful at this. So forming a habit takes an average of 66 days. I challenge you, listening audience, I challenge you to set your alarm for an hour earlier for the next two months. That's all you have to do. Set your alarm an hour earlier for the next two months. Rearranging your waking schedule will surely improve your day-to-day -day accomplishments in a multitude of ways in the end. That's why I make you agree to the statement when you become a freight sales agent with our highly productive office. Some of you remember, some of you don't, but you'll see in point B, I make you agree to produce Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. minimum. 
Reduce Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. minimum. This is a line. It's a request that I actually make you agree to when you become a freight agent with our office. In my opinion, 7 a.m. is still not early enough. However, if you have any other questions on waking and getting up earlier, shoot me a note. I typically check my emails at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, Marie and I are at our desks by 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And one of the main reasons is so we deal with the listening public, so we deal with our customers on the East Coast, which at that time is 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, great topic today. Again, if there's one main habit that you should develop this year, it's this one, and that is getting up earlier. You may think, you know, this is a this is a sales profession. Well, believe me, if I didn't if I didn't think this was important, I wouldn't talk about it. But by getting up earlier and being more productive earlier, remember our brains fire better in the earlier morning hours. If I didn't feel it was important, I never would have even broached it. So make that one of the main habits that you develop in this new year. Okay, let's go ahead and move on from there into our next series, our, our Remember series. Uh, moving on to our third attachment there. Now, what I just went over applies to these documents that I'm about to go over here. And that is... If, we get, if we're getting up early, we're going to be more prepared when we connect and collaborate and build relationships with our customers. Would you agree? Well, let's talk about that. Our, our, our third attachment states remember. Again, remember when you're calling your, your prospects and customers that this is typically when you're calling somebody for the first or second time, deliver your opening statement in a calm, confident crisp and articulate fashion. Deliver your opening statement however you want to design that. I, I know I've uh, got some examples on our, uh, on our, uh, uh, in our freight sales success guide, but deliver your opening statement in a calm, confident, crisp and articulate fashion. Rushing and mumbling creates undesirable impressions. How many times have I talked about when you get on the phone and you say stuff like, um, uh, well, my name is, uh, hey, uh, what, what is my, oh, oh, yeah, hi, Jim. Uh, my name is uh, Ted, and I'm, uh, oh, boy, where am I, oh, uh, yeah, I'm calling from. Uh, stuff like that is just going to create undesirable impressions. Wouldn't you like to stand out when you make that first, that first or second call to your, to your prospect? So deliver it, deliver your opening statement in a calm, confident, crisp, and articulate fashion. Moving on, moving on to our fourth attachment, moving on to our fourth attachment, which states, same fashion, remember when you're calling your prospects and customers for all the words that you have in your opening statement, for all the words in your opening statement, just ask yourself, I mean, review this. Does this add to what I'm attempting to accomplish? What are you attempting to accomplish? Well, you're attempting to get a hold of the shipping decision maker and build a relationship with them. Well, ask yourself, look through all the words in the opening statements that you make to your prospects and customers. Do those words add to what you're attempting to accomplish? If it doesn't, then delete those words out of your opening statement. It's that simple. So one more time, for all the words in your opening statement, ask yourself, does this add to what you're attempting to accomplish? Is this adding value? Is it adding to your ability to connect and, and collaborate better and build a stronger relationship with your prospect and, and customer? If not, then get rid of it, whether it's a whole line or a whole word. If it's not doing you any good, then get rid of it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our fifth document, our fifth attachment on my call today. I'll say it again. Remember, remember when you're calling your prospects and customers on your follow-up calls. Remember when you're calling your prospects and customers on your follow-up calls. 
don't ask prospects if they received your first initial email info. Meaning, as I've gone over with you in, in my training with you, I give you a example, I give you a template for the email that you are to send out to your prospects for the first time. When you're following up, don't ask your prospects if they received it. Just assume that they did. In your mind, they've already got it. Don't make this email a reason for your calling. So, one more time, when you follow up, don't ask your prospects if they received your first initial email. Just assume that they did. Don't make that first email a reason for your calling. When you call them, just go right into your conversation because here's one of the main reasons why. They can always tell you that they didn't receive it. What do you do then? What do you do then? No, really, what do you do? Well, it's a tough situation to be in. So basically, when they say that, you've wasted more time. Okay, let me go back and let me resend it to you. You've wasted another one, two, or three days. So just assume that they got it and go right into your relationship building with your customer. Don't make that email a reason for your calling. Let's go ahead and move out of that one and we'll uh, open up our next document here. And that is, <clears throat> remember when you're calling your prospects and customers to call with questions and other new ideas. Call them with questions. Have a list of questions ready ready when uh, when you finally get a hold of that shipping decision maker. Now again, are you going to do this on your first call? No, but on your follow-up calls. Call with some questions to ask them right away or some some new ideas. Prospects will and may initially object to your freight service, but ideas and questions create interest and curiosity. Ideas and questions create interest and curiosity. How many times do I tell you how I end my email or end my conversation with a question. Why do I do it? Because it creates interest and curiosity and it makes you give an answer back to me. So don't just call by saying, gee, what are you moving today? Call, call with some valid questions to ask them. Now that is a question, but it's not a good question. You know, ideas. Hey, I, uh, here's an example. I, 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 I saw that I saw that they're building a new plant down the street from you. Uh, fill them in. Did, have you seen the construction going on on that new plant down uh, down the street from you? You know, it may not uh, be a you know business builder for your prospect, but it 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 shows that you're on the ball and you're not just a standard freight agent calling them with the typical schlock that agents say when they're calling customers. So, call with questions and new ideas. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, our, I believe our seventh attachment. Seventh attachment states, again, remember when you're calling your, co your prospects and customers, you can't go wrong when you, when you call your prospects and customers. You can't go wrong when you start off with an example of, bear with me, You can't go wrong when you start off a conversation with thank you or congratulations or I'm thinking of you as your opening or your reason for calling. Just just saying something like that, it makes you, it, it, it sets you apart. You don't sound like the typical agent, hi, this is Ted, what are you moving today? I mean, that, that's really what the typical agent says, hi. This is so-and-so, you know, what's moving today. Call with something, you know, thank you, congratulations. Hey, boy, I, I found out about the new plant that's being built on your street that made me think of you. Uh, you know, make something like that the reason for your calling, you know, th things like that, th things that, that are going to generate some more excitement uh, to your prospect than just what are you moving today? Okay, let me just say that one more time. You can't go wrong by starting off with thank you, congratulations, or I'm thinking of you as your reason, as your opening or your reason for calling. 
Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our last attachment. As I say on every call, guys, I am a firm believer in the Bible. If you haven't figured that out already, I, a lot of what I uh, teach you, it comes from the Bible, especially when it comes to being honest and doing business in a, in a, in a forthright frame of mind. But my topic for today, my Bible insight topic for today is Godly Freight Agents Draw Strength from the Lord. What a great place to draw your strength from. Let me say that again. Godly Freight Agents Draw Strength from the Lord. Where do, what do I base this on? What verse do I base this on? Well, I get this from a well-known verse, Isaiah, Old Testament, Isaiah Chapter 40, verse 31, it states this, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Boy, what a great verse to, to live by. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Why do you think the eagle, the bald eagle, is our <clears throat> national symbol for here in the U.S. here because it emanates strength. They shall not run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Well, what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this for sure? Well, as you know, all of us have moments when we feel exhausted. All of us suffer through tough times, difficult days, perplexing periods of our lives. Thankfully, God promises to give us comfort and strength if and when we turn to him. If you're a person with too, too many demands and too few hours in which to meet them, it's, it's time to examine your priorities while you pare down your daily to-do list. While you're at it, take time to focus upon God and his love for you. Excuse me. Then ask him for the wisdom to prioritize your life and the strength to fulfill your responsibilities. God will give you that energy to do the most important things on today's to-do list if and when you ask him. So how can we apply this? Well, Jim Gallery gives us a great quote here. Back to our sheet. And what does Jim say? Jim says, God is the one who provides our strength, not only for coping with the demands of the day, but also to rise above them. May we look to him for the strength to soar. Look to God for the strength to soar. Another quote here by Thomas J. Watson that fits in very good here with my, uh, with my title here, Within Us. There are wells of thought and dynamos of energy which are not suspected until emergencies arise. That comes from Thomas J. Watson. Great topic today for my Bible insight. Okay, boy, been a great topic today on developing that one main habit for a new year. For any of you that have any questions about what I went over today, if you'd like to call me and discuss those with me, excuse me, I'm your man, Ted Keys. My number is 626-309-9141. For those of you that have a strong burning desire to become a top-notch freight agent for our office at Green Meadows Productions here, I am your guy, Ted Keys. Again, my number is 626-309-9141. If you have any desire, any desire to hear this, um, hear this recording in podcast form, then just go to tedkeysonline.com forward slash podcasts. Tonight, tomorrow, I usually get it up there within several hours, and you are more than welcome to click on the first podcast selection. Any of you with questions at our top-notch uh, freight agents for our office involving our freight system that we utilize to move our freight, that question is for Maria at 626-309-9141. It would be great to hear from any of you on the topic today. Take care, guys. Uh, God bless you all, whoever's listening in. I will talk to you again next week at the same time, 2 p.m. Pacific time, 
5 p.m. Eastern Time. You've just taken a tremendous step forward by watching and applying my Tuesday conference call highlight. Do you desire to earn and learn with our top freight team and Christian-based office? Yes? We're searching for a self-starter who's serious, motivated, and ready to take action right now. Is that you? Go to tedkeysonline.com slash contacts and enter your contact details. We provide top-notch freight agent sales training to you. Then you deliver those same skills with confidence to the freight industry marketplace. I'll talk to you soon.